I wanted to do a quick video on Astro DB. I know my content isn't really based around Astro. I do a lot of Next.js stuff, but I just wanted to kind of play around with the new developer experience and see if there's anything interesting that's worth making a video about. So even if you don't know Astro, you will probably learn something new about developer experiences. Um, let's just go ahead and try to get this set up. So the first thing you need to do is you're gonna have to set up an Astro project. So let's just go ahead and copy this command. And then in my workspace, I'll just go ahead and create a new one and I'll call this my Astro project. Simple enough. Now the one thing I do like about Astro is like they really put some effort into their CLI. Like it just, it just feels nice using it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say, just use the sample files. Yes, we wanna use TypeScript. Yes, I want strict. Install the dependencies. Do I wanna get repo? No, it's fine. So that's gonna scaffold up an Astro project. And then also it's going to npm installer dependencies. When that's done, we can go ahead and run a single command to set up AstroDB. So what I understand about AstroDB, behind the scenes, it's not like a new database. They're just using Terso, which is a database service. And then they're also using Drizzle ORM behind the scenes, but they kind of like abstracted some of the stuff away to make it easier to get set up, I believe. Honestly, I didn't look too much into any of this. I just wanna see how easy it is to set up a database with an Astro project. So now that we have the Astro project set up, Let's just go ahead and go into that my Astro project. I'll open it up and then I'll npm run dev. And then that should spin up our Astro project. Let's go to our local host 4321. And here it is. Okay, so Astro is running. And going through the docs to set up Astro DB, you can go down here to integrations. I can go ahead and just install Astro like this. Open up a new terminal, go ahead and run that. And yes, I want to continue. Okay, so that's going to install some dependencies. Okay, and then it's gonna create a config file and a seed file, I guess. And then it tries to update your Astro config with some information so it knows how to connect to the database. And we should be good on that front. So let's check out this config file. This is where you like you define your schemas. And over here is your seed file where you can kind of like set up some initial data when your database is ready. So let's just kind of scroll through the docs. They tell you how to set up a table. So like, let's just go ahead and grab this code and I'll paste it in. And the cool thing is when you save this file, notice that it's watching this file and it automatically restarts and recreates your database with a new schema. So behind the scenes, this is using libsql, I believe. And there should be like a, a database file somewhere. Maybe this is it, content TB. But you didn't have to like install Postgres. You didn't have to set up MySQL locally. It basically just uses SQLite where you have like a local file. And the cool thing about that is that Terso also runs on like libsql. So SQLite locally, SQLite when you deploy, you don't have to like have an actual running Postgres database. And SQLite's actually pretty performant. It can handle quite a lot of concurrent connections. So for most initial projects that aren't like super big in scale, SQLite should work pretty fine from what I've read. Anyway, we have a table here, okay? So we have a, a comment that has an author and a body. And then in the seed script, Let's see if we can just go ahead and make some data. So I'm gonna say await db insert. And the way this works, I believe it's just drizzle behind the scenes, which I've used on other projects as well. And we can just go ahead and create some records here. So like we need an author, I'll say Cody, and then we'll have a body that says, please subscribe. All right, and so we can go ahead and just maybe make two of those things. Make one called Bob. So now let's go back and try to read through here. So the first thing you wanna do is we can display this data on our page. So I don't know too much about Astro syntax, so I'm just gonna copy this and go to our Astro file over here. Let's say pages, go ahead and just overwrite all that. And this is how you do like server-side rendering. So it's gonna fetch the comments when this route first loads, and then you have access to this variable down here in these curly braces. So I'm mapping over those, displaying the author, displaying the body. So if I were to save this and just refresh our page, notice that that data comes, comes through. So if you take a step back and like think about what just happened, we set up a project, we have it fully integrated with the database, we have it reading data from that database. The data is automatically reseeded when I change it. So for example, if I say Bob exclamation mark and press save, notice that the seed script is going to reseed the database. This page reloads. Pretty nice user experience. I'm not gonna lie about that. So let's see if we can keep going down the tutorial. I believe they have one for inserting. So in Astro, if you want to insert, you could potentially just like, I don't know, make a post HTML element here. And instead of content, I'm going to name this body like that. And then when you do a post in Astro, I believe there's a way to like 
listen for it. So I'm going to go here and say if it's a post method, we can go ahead and insert a new record into our database. So here this needs to be body, that needs to be body, that needs to be body. I don't know why that's complaining. Oh, this needs to be body over here. Okay, so again, there's a form, has a author and a body input fields. It gets submitted. Astro checks for a post back. It says, hey, this is a post method. We can go ahead and insert the data that was sent in. And then we refetch the data from the database and that gets sent back to the UI. So now if we go back to our app, let's go ahead and submit this. And it says, could not parse content as form data. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, I'm just going to comment out everything. Like, you would think... Like, I'm not even going to use the, the database stuff. Let's just comment all this out. I have a form that does a post to an endpoint. Why is this not working? Do not parse content as form data. Um, okay, I'm just completely lost. A project with SSR output server enabled. What does that even mean? Is that what it's saying to do? Well, that sucks. I wasted some time trying to figure that out. But I guess you have to enable server-side rendering by saying output server. Um, but that's probably just an astro caveat I didn't understand, but I would think that the error message would be a little bit more descriptive when that happens. Anyway, after a little bit of debugging, this form submits. This thing is inserted into the database. And this is pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and test out the Astro Studio. So like when you need to go to production, you have to take your local database schema. You need to push it somewhere. So if you run MPX Astro DB login, that's going to authenticate you with Astro Studio. And then I believe you can do a, a MPX Astro DB link or something. Yeah, I think that's it. And it'll basically look at your current project that you're in. And it'll ask if you want to link your project with an existing one. I'll say no. I want to create a brand new one. And then I'll name it this. I'll say North America East. And I believe that's going to set up your project. So now if you go over to Astro Studio, you can kind of view that. How do you get the Astro Studio? Here we go. All right, so now we have my Astro project. Let's go ahead and click this. And right now there is no database. So what we can do is we can say MPX Astro DB push, I believe. And that should sync our local database with the remote database. And now if we go over here, we should see the comment table show up. So over here we have comments, which gives us the ability to kind of like add new rows just like kind of like a Drizzle Studio or Prisma Studio. And refresh some stuff. So how do you how do you delete a row though? There's no delete button. I guess you just backspace it. I personally would probably add a delete button. Um, make it a little bit more onboarding a little bit easier. Right, that's actually as far as I'm gonna take this video. I just wanted to kind of demo Astro DB. I think some of the concepts that they're doing are pretty cool. Like for example, you just save a seed file and it kind of re-initializes your whole database. Also, you go in here and you edit your config file and you save it, and that'll also reinitialize your database and reseed it. Now, I don't know how I feel about that because sometimes I'll be like playing around locally, I'll insert some data, and then I'll be like, oh, I need to add something to the schema. And, then, and if that blows away all my data, I probably wouldn't be happy about that. So maybe there's a way to like disable that. But so overall, I think the uh, developer experience is pretty cool. I mean, it's very fast to get an Astro project set up and then add in this database feature. So definitely take some notes. I think this is a really good developer experience when it comes to how you could potentially interact with SQL on a brand new project. And I think there's going to be a lot of people who really enjoy using this because it's so easy to get set up. And I guess the nice thing in Astro Studio is they have a way for you to export all your SQL statements. And so if you ever need to get off of Astro DB or behind the scenes they're using Terso, this is how you do it. You just export your data and then you could just go ahead and do this, run this locally if you didn't want to use their service. Anyway, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave a comment, subscribe. Have a good day. Happy coding.